All right, guys, welcome to the 3D Workshop. I'm JP, and today we're taking a look at the reality of the Creality CR10. This is our first episode. We've got a special giveaway. Stick around. This is going to be fun. <laughs> The CR10, oh my gosh, where do we even start with this thing? This machine has had so much hype around it in the last few weeks, and for good reason. It's a massive printer. It has a 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume. It's got multiple different versions, the S model, the S4, and the S5. The last two having even bigger build volumes. Those are 400 and 500 cubed. But we're looking at the base S model today uh, with a number of upgrades. Um, this actually does have the dual Z-axis lead screw upgrade. Um, and as you can see, it has a pretty massive part cooler going on in the front. Um, we're going to talk about all of it, but we also wanted to say thank you. This is our first episode, so we are going to give away a free Raspberry Pi Zero W to one of our subscribers at the end of this video and the best way we can think to show off this printer is to, to make something with it. So we've got a Raspberry Pi, we've got a 3D printer, let's see what this thing can do. We're going to build a case for that Pi. Raspberry Pi case, but we also have a couple of surprises with this, and I'm going to be completely honest, I was a complete moron when I set up this printer. I forgot to level the bed when I put it up on the table to make this video. So what we have here is a Raspberry Pi case with some really, really ugly first layer adhesion. Uh, it, it's it's just got a ton of issues. The corners are all kinds of warped and, and came up off the bed. Um, so I'm sorry, that's my fault. Uh, but if we look at it, it does work, right? It does snap together. It would hold a Raspberry Pi, but we're not gonna give that to, to someone. So I went ahead and I made a new one. Um, let's look at this one. This one has excellent bed adhesion. Uh, it's got no lifting in the corners. All of the holes look really good. Um, and if we take this Raspberry Pi here and just take a quick look, it fits right in there. The case goes on and life is happy and jolly once again. Um, let's take another look at a part that came off this printer. Here's a just a standard benchy boat. Um, for reference, uh, we do have a little bit of uh, deformation at the very base of the hull here where it went unsupported. Um, we've got a little bit of axis shift, it looks like, and a couple of zits on the side. Um, and then up here we do have a little bit of stringing going on with the overhangs and uh, it's probably due to uh, some, some bridging issues and, and maybe the settings in Kira. But, um, I've seen that on almost every Benchy I've, I've printed off this thing. But besides that, this is an excellent Benchy. Everything's there, the details are all there. I can read the lettering on the back. All the holes are there and round. Um, that's a really good Benchy. Uh, so, so moving on, we'll get this pie out of here, keep it safe. Um, let's look at some other parts because quite frankly, this thing can do some amazing stuff. This is the Thingiverse Skull uh, pen pencil holder kind of thing. I need a new one for my desk. I figured why not? I've got a CR10. Let's make this thing. It's awesome. 
So looking at it, um, you're seeing it exactly how it came off the printer. This, this is actually a phenomenal print in my opinion because there is very little stringing. Everything bridged properly and, and you can't see it, but these, these are tapered rails on this. I mean, this is a really, really impressive print to come off of the CR-10 like this. So that's awesome. We've got this cup holder that's going back over here. Uh, let's take a look at the accuracy of this thing. Can it, can it do uh, precision parts? So how about this? A, a dual fang upgrade for uh, the part cooler. I mean, that's got a number of different holes uh, that, that clearly need to be in location in order to function properly. Uh, this needs to be of proper size to fit around the, uh, the hot end heat sink. You know, this is, uh, is all precision up here to mount to the, the stock uh, blower fan. And I can tell you from experience, it worked. It fit, everything went together. My only issue was that uh, the screws right here, uh, the stock ones are not long enough. So it would tilt uh, because I couldn't fasten it down properly. So yes, can it do precision parts? It can do precision parts uh, to, to a, a pretty high degree of accuracy. So. Uh, yes, we're talking about a 3D printer, not CNC machining, so accuracy is, uh, you know, in the uh, eye of the beholder, I guess. But uh, another couple parts to look at, here's some frame braces, uh, it's a self-replicating machine, we're making parts for the CR-10 on the CR-10, um, and when I threw a square up to that 90 degree angle, I have a precision ground machinist square that's accurate down to one thousandth of an inch and I could not see the light of day when I held a flashlight up behind it. That was unbelievable. I could not believe my eyes. The fact that it held such a tight 90 on a 3D printer is huge. That's a, that's a huge accomplishment and says just tons about what this printer is capable of. Uh, this is another frame brace. Um, I wanted to print something a little bit taller and see if I would get any uh, you know, tilt up in the top uh, range of this part, and the answer was no. I got no tilt. I got a little bit of artifacting in the corners, but nothing that concerns me. Um, and then I left the, the support on this still, so you can kind of see what that looks like, uh, this grid work down here. Uh, but all in all, I have gotten some excellent parts off the CR-10, but I wasn't always getting excellent parts off the CR-10, so let's talk about the machine itself and the upgrades that I had to do to this machine to get it printing at that level of quality. So you've seen my upgrades, now let's have it. The brass tax conversation surrounding the CR-10. Does it live up to the hype? Is it worth the money? And should you buy it? First and foremost, we're gonna talk about my upgrades because if I'm honest, most of them are not necessary. Things like lights and dust covers and tool holders are not necessary upgrades. But the CR-10 has some caveats that uh, required me to print certain upgrades, such as these Z motor spacers because as it moved up in travel, it was pulling on the lead screw and putting strain on the, the coupler. Yeah, that was kind of a necessary upgrade. Um, things like the support for the hotbed wiring, yeah, that's kind of necessary unless you want them to break. Um, things riding the fence would be the stands for uh, <laughs> the control box because arguably there's not quite enough cable coming out of the uh, the motherboard for the z-axis as it moves up um, so yes just be aware there are there are reasons for some of my upgrades and they're solving problems and then there's just kind of frivolous upgrades that I have on here um, and this is one of them I know you're wondering what that is it's a giant 50 millimeter dual cooling fang for, for the, the part cooler um, it's not necessary. It was a test to see if I could make a part that would press fit onto this machine and hold those type of tolerances off the print bed. And the answer was yes. And it's been working flawlessly, so I just haven't taken it off. And quite frankly, I think it looks kind of cool. 
and that's what I love about the CR-10. Does it live up to the hype? Yes, I think it does, absolutely. Um, it's huge, it's got so much functionality. We've covered most of it already in this video. Um, is it worth the money? Yes, at this price point, you're not gonna find anything else with this big of a build volume and that can do it so well right out of the box. But should you buy it? That's the real question. That's what you're probably here wondering. Um, to answer that, I have to ask you a question. Do you want to tinker with your machine? If the answer is that yes, and you, you wanna learn how a 3D printer works and you're okay with, you know, diagnosing little issues and making upgrades and, and new parts to solve those problems, then yes, the CR-10 is my recommendation and, and don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Uh, if on the other hand, you're someone at the other end of that spectrum and you don't want to think about things like spacing Z motors and supporting wires and making other upgrades to fix existing problems, then the real answer here is no. Um, and I know that's not going to be a popular opinion but the reality is, is that this is a really good printer for a lot of people, but it is not the best printer for everyone. There is no best printer for everyone. Uh, the CR-10 is really good at what it does, but it's just that. It is what it is. It's a good, big printer with a lot of functionality at an arguably very low price point. So, that being said, we know that there's going to be some compromises, but the CR-10 handles them all very well. So final verdict, one sentence summarization of the CR-10, giant printer with huge, huge potential at a very good price point, but is not for someone who doesn't want to tinker with their machine. Okay, I'm JP, this is the 3D Workshop, thank you so much for being here, we've got more videos on the way, uh, and we've got a Raspberry Pi to give away. So stick around for one more second and we're going to talk about how we're doing that. All right, guys, there you have it. This has been our review on the Creality CR-10. Uh, I'm JP. This is the 3D Workshop, and we are brand new. So here's how we're going to give away this Raspberry Pi. Whoever subscribes and gives us the best recommendation in the comments for a new video or a new topic to cover in one of our future videos, uh, that's, that's really, it's that simple. We're going to give this to whoever we think gives us the best response. So... If you want to see more videos, let us know what to make because we want to make stuff that you want to see. If you like this video, you know what to do. I'm JP, 3D Workshop. See ya!